morning, and welcome to our morning worship service here at Locust Grove United Church of Christ in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, you can follow along in our call to worship as it is a responsive reading. We gather this morning as followers of God with foolish inclinations. As we look for ways to store our treasures here on earth. We gather this morning as people who seek to be wise. To turn to God for guidance and live more for others and less for ourselves. Scripture tells us that those who prefer to give themselves credit for their blessings are called foolish by God. But God continues to be gifts on those who are thankful and in to bless others. May we grow in our walk as we worship today.
As we gather together in your name, may we be open to all you have for us in this service. May we be willing to let you touch our hearts and draw us closer to you. May we be willing to let go of what is holding us back in our walk with you and let you change us. And may we be willing to hear your voice as you call us to look at the priorities of our lives and make you first. For we gather in your holy name today. Amen. Scripture readings for today are as follows. The epistle reading is from Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 11. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your, work, your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in the glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immortality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. But of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not, do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on a new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of the Creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, 
circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Our gospel reading for today is out of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator, which between you. Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of the certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all of my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night of your life will be demanded from you, and then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. This ends the scripture readings for today. Have a blessed week. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see all of you again. Let us go before our Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we are so thankful that you have brought us here this morning to be in your presence together. What a blessing. And we ask, Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, you would speak to our hearts through the words of song, through the words of scripture, and through the words you have given me. And may all that we do and all that we say bring you honor and glory and praise. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. As most of you know, recently my family and I got to spend two glorious weeks with our grandson, Ledger, who just turned three. And we got to welcome to the family our newest grandson, Ryder. It was glorious and so much fun. We played and played and played again with Ledger in between sharing times of holding Ryder. One thing you notice when you play with a three-year-old is the language they use. You tend to notice the things they say about their favorite TV shows and the characters in them. And you notice how often they say the word mine, as in, that's mine, when they grab whatever of theirs that you had just picked up. <laughs> I always bring a flashlight with me when I travel. Even though I have one on my phone, I like to carry another one. And a few years ago, I got a really bright, small LED flashlight, and Ledger was fascinated by it. So whenever he came over to the Verbo, where we were staying, I let him play with it. But interspersed throughout our playing with the toys he bring over, I would hear that phrase, that's mine, that's mine. So I knew I had to add to the education I knew his parents were giving him about the concept of sharing. And I explained that I shared the flashlight, which was mine, with him, so he could share his toys with me. And I began to hear that phrase a little less frequently. Now Ledger is three years old, he's just learning to share. And I noticed that as our time went on, he did offer his toys to me much more regularly, even those really neat dinosaurs we gave him for his birthday. Sharing is a part of life, isn't it? We learn that in order to coexist with others, we need to share our toys, our belongings, our time, 
and even our finances. We do it because in our brief time on this planet, we want to enjoy the company of others. And we also know that it's what Jesus wants us to do. Share what we have because God has blessed us with it. And hopefully as we share, as we grow as believers in Christ, we use the word mine less frequently. Well, that word kind of pops up in our passage from the Gospel of Luke today. Jesus is approached by a young man who wants what is coming to him in an inheritance. He asks Jesus to tell his brother to divide the inheritance with him. You can almost hear this young man saying, tell him to give me what is mine. Jesus does not want the job of judge or arbiter, so he declines. But since he can see into this man's heart, he recognizes there is some greed there. Perhaps this young man has asked for more than his share. Perhaps he has let this situation come between him and his brother. Whatever the reason, Jesus recognizes that this is a good place or a parable. A parable about a rich man whose crops have produced so well he doesn't know where to store them. So he decides to tear down his barns and build bigger ones. As we look at the man in this parable, we realize that he didn't do anything evil to earn his wealth. He just had a good year growing his crops. He wasn't dishonest. He did what we all do. He was preparing for the future. Only, if we look at his language, it kind of reminds us of a three-year-old. We find him saying over and over, I and myself, because it's all about him. And although it isn't said here, he is inferring the word mine. This is mine and I'm not sharing. After all, as one theologian reminds us, this large crop would have been regarded as a blessing from God. But instead of seeing it as a blessing, he saw it as a dilemma because he had nowhere to store it. Not once did he think of sharing it with those in need. Not once did he think of anyone but himself. Mine, mine, mine. Only it wasn't his, it was God's. As was his life, which God called the very night that he built the bigger barns. Eat, drink, and be merry, only there wasn't time. Not only did this man think only of himself, but he foolishly thought he would live forever. I think we all kind of do that, don't we? We make our fortunes, whatever that may mean. We save for our retirement and hope we have enough to live comfortably and take care of our families. We call that the American dream, don't we? And who doesn't think that way? I know I have. But there is one thing this rich man in the parable wasn't. Jesus said he wasn't rich toward God. In fact, he lived this life as if there wasn't a God. He didn't view his surplus as a blessing because blessings are to be shared. He viewed it as a dilemma to be solved only by him and he did not include God. Now I realize we all know this parable. We're so familiar with it, but we've read it and heard it read in church for many years. But I wonder if, like me, you heard this parable and read it and felt like it just didn't relate to your life. After all, I used to think, well, I'm not wealthy. I don't have a lot. I'm not like him. <clears throat> That's what I used to think until I dug a little deeper. We all save and plan for the future. After all, that makes sense, right? We have our 401ks, our IRAs, and our bank accounts, and many of us live like this man 
live our lives rarely thinking that one day we will die. We just go on each day rarely letting that cross our minds. What this parable reminds each of us to do is to ask ourselves, how often do we view everything we have as just mine and not God's? How often, like my three-year-old grandson, do we say mine and hold it closer? How often do we live our lives as if they are endless? But if we do that, we are also forgetting one thing. It's not ours. Our money, our wealth, our possessions, our very lives. They are all God's. And only God knows how many days we have left on this planet. If we look at the very next verse in the 12th chapter of Luke, we find Jesus telling the crowd to not worry about your life, what you will eat, or your body, what you will wear. He tells us to consider the lilies of the fields and the birds of the air, how God provides for them. And he concludes with the words, but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. The man in the parable did not seek God's kingdom. He was too busy making his own. He was a rich man who was not rich toward God. And what good did his riches bring him? Nothing. For the Lord demanded his life as he was busy building for more. He was not rich toward God. So what does it mean to be rich toward God? I like what theologian Debbie Thomas writes about that. She says, maybe it means guarding against greed instead of obsessing over fairness. Maybe it means holding our mortality closer than we want to. Maybe it means asking hard questions about what makes us feel secure or insecure. Maybe it means acknowledging that even our hard-earned, self-earned wealth comes from God and belongs to God. Maybe it means dialoguing with God more ardently than we monologue with ourselves. I think it means that we view what we have differently than most people around us. We realize that all we have is God's. And we realize that all we have is a blessing from God to be shared with those in need. That the word mine is removed and the label God's is put on all we own and all we are as we seek how and what God wants us to do with what we have, with what God has given to us. I know when I see my grandson Ledger after Christmas, he will probably still try to tell me that I can't touch some of his toys because they are his, mine, mine, and I will try to re-educate him on sharing. But mostly, I hope that time reminds me that everything I have belongs to God and to always share as God calls me to do. And maybe Ledger and I will use the word mine a little less frequently. Amen. We have, whoops, excuse me. We have quite a few prayer requests today and a few birthdays. <coughs> Valerie has a birthday this week, and so does Michael Mann. So let's join together in singing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear friends, happy birthday to you, and many more. And I have quite a few prayer requests. <coughs> I went out and saw Bill Gordon at um, the rehab. And he's doing pretty good, doing pretty good. He's going to be there a little bit longer than I previously thought, but he's progressing. So keep him and Thelma in your prayers. 
<coughs> and we want to wish Matt best wishes, and we're going to pray that everything goes well in your new position. We're happy for you. And I asked for prayers for a writer, my grandson. He has a minor health issue. They're going to be taking him to um, possibly to St. Louis or the Children's Hospital for a minor health issue. They're not thinking it's anything major, but they want to double check it there. So if you could keep writing in your prayers, I'd appreciate it. <coughs> and of course, we're all seeing about the fires, and I know there's fires in California and numerous other states, and it breaks the heart, doesn't it, to see all of that going on. Pray for those who have lost homes and, and those who are fighting the fire. And of course, all the floods in Kentucky and in St. Louis, a lot of people have lost everything. I couldn't believe the pictures of the young girl sitting on the top of the roof of her house with her dog waiting to be rescued. Let's, let's keep those folks in our prayers. And at the same time, Let's keep places where there is no rain. Springfield, where I was last week, two weeks, brown as could be. No rain, hardly at all. When we got out of church one Sunday, there was a little rain, but so many states are just, they don't, they're running out of water. So let's pray for rain for them. And uh, my husband is out hiking again. <laughs> Do you don't mind keeping him in prayer? <coughs> New Hampshire was a little rougher than they thought it was going to be. They knew it was going to be hard, but it was very hard. So uh, they didn't get as far as they wanted to go. They did six miles the other day. Now, I think, yikes, you know, that's nothing for them. <laughs> but it's very hard, very high, and the rocky. So if you don't mind keeping them in your prayers, I'd appreciate that. And Valerie's co-worker, Matthew, was in a house fire. And he was burned by the fire and is a burn, in a burn unit in a hospital. So let's pray for healing for him. And Valerie's daughter is having surgery this week. So we'll pray that for us. And um, we want to keep John Burry's family in our prayers. He died right before I went on vacation. And his funeral will be this Friday. So let's keep him and his family in our prayers. And Sandy's uncle, Dan Danny, is still doing dialysis. But he did have some good news. Was, uh, what they thought was a cancerous tumor turned out not to be. So... Thank God for that, but prayer for him as he continues in dialysis. And Joanne's brother, Barry, is having health issues. So let's pray for Barry. And Bev's son has a, a health concern, so let's keep him in our prayers as well. And um, Kathy told me that Craig Richard, her brother-in-law, his cancer is back. He had been clean last summer, and it's been very hard for them, of course, to hear that news. So let's pray for healing and for strength for them. And let us go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we know, Lord, we grow up in this society and we tend to think that all we have is ours. I've worked for it. I've struggled for it. But our society's values and views are so different from yours, Lord. And you remind us that everything we have is yours. You gave us the ability to do the things we've done 
to be able to have the, the wealth and the possessions we have and even when our barns are overflowing with blessings, you say, don't keep it, give it away, share it. Share it and remember that it's God's. It's God's. And it's hard for us sometimes to do that, Lord. That word mine comes into our minds, Lord. We think about that. And this parable gets us to look at it in a way that's probably not too comfortable. We don't like that idea that as soon as everything is going well for the man in the parable, his life is, is taken and snuffed out. And that being rich and eating and drinking and being merry is gone. And you're not saying we cannot be merry and enjoy the blessings you give to us. But we need to share and to view it differently than he did. That all we have is yours. And you have blessed us. And there are many who don't have the same blessings and you call us to give and share with them. Let this story wrestle inside of us, Lord, this week. Let it make us uncomfortable. Let us ask you what you call us to do and what, how you want us to live and be. Thank you for parables like this that encourage us to grow ever more stronger in our faith and in our walk with you and, and get us to think and struggle. Jesus, we know you love to do that. Give us parables like that, and we're grateful. We ask that you would bless Valerie and Michael with wonderful birthdays this week, Lord. Just bless them both. And that you would be with, Brett, with Bill Gordon, who is at the rehab, working hard after his hip surgery. We just pray you would be with Thelma, who's with him all, almost all the time, and just help him to mend and heal and be able to do all they want him to do there. We pray, Lord, that you would bless Matt as he begins this new job, and we, we pray it truly is a blessing for him and for this church. And Lord, I ask that you would be with my grandson, Ryder, and my, my son, Andrew and Janelle tomorrow they'll be taking possibly taking him to the children's hospital and we we pray that they get good results Lord and that it doesn't turn out to be anything serious we pray for those who are fighting those fires in California and several of the other states we just pray that you keep them safe that you help them to be able to stop the fires be with those who have lost all Help them, Lord. Give them what they need to continue to live their lives and to, to receive that which others have been giving to them. And we pray for those who have lost everything in Kentucky and in St. Louis. Tremendous flooding, homes completely washed away, lives changed. And so many have lost their lives in the floods in Kentucky. We pray for strength for healing, for comfort. We thank you for those who are already donating and doing what they can to help them, Lord. And please let the rain stop there. But we do pray for rain in states like California and Arizona that are struggling and lakes are drying up and water is in short supply. I ask that you bring um, safety, give safety to Ron and Diana as they're hiking this week and Ron next week. Grant them safety in their hiking. And be with Valerie's co-worker who was in a house fire and he himself was burned. And we pray, Lord, for, for strength and healing and courage for him as he goes through what that involves. We pray for Valerie's daughters having surgery this week and is very anxious and we we pray for healing and that it goes really well. And we thank you for, for John Burry's life and what a blessing he was and what an active church member he was here for so, so many years. And I know they're, they're missing him at Misericordia because he touched the lives of so many people. So be with his family as we begin the planning of his funeral for this Friday. And I ask, Lord, that you would be with the family of Nan and Jubal Frost, Reverend Frost, a colleague 
who died this past week. We called him Frosty, and he was a blessing. Both of them were. And they died a month apart. So I pray that you would be with his family who are having a very difficult time. We pray for Sandy's Uncle Danny, and we are so thankful that the tumor was not cancerous, but we do pray you continue to give him healing and strength through the dialysis that he is on. And that you would be with Joanne's brother Barry, who is going through health issues. Touch him with your healing presence, Lord. And be with Bev's son and the health concerns that he is now facing as well. Touch him also with your healing presence. And, we, and with Kathy, we pray for Craig, her brother-in-law, whose cancer is back. And we, we pray for his family and for the doctors and all who will be guiding and leading them and what treatment they need to take. And we pray for your healing presence to touch them. Thank you, Lord, that when our list is long or even when it's short, you never tire hearing from us, Lord. You want to know what is on our hearts because your love is so tremendous and so great. So let us join together now as we pray the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
we learn from our scripture passages, all we have is God's. And it all belongs, everything we own belongs to God. So let us give back to God today as we pray our offertory prayer. Our gifts today represent the work of our hands, the abilities you have given us, and our efforts to use them well. We share them here to support one another and to make a difference in our world. Help us as a church to make a faithful witness of our love for one another and you, and in service to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And uh, I don't know the time yet for the service for John on Friday, so look at the paper. I didn't get a chance to look at the paper today. What did it say, 11 o'clock? Okay. So we hadn't figured that out before I left. So, okay, 11 o'clock. And um, that would be right here at the church. And the gray tub is still out there. I just got some more dresses last week. Thank you. Keep them coming. <laughs> We're filling the racks at Faith Church. And boy, they just got a, a whole bunch of LuLaRue dresses, brand new. So there's all sorts of things coming in. It's, it's a, going to be a great event. New Hope Thistles UCC, we see here, is having their annual car show, August 6th. 11 to 2, 11 to 5 p.m. And that's all our right.